edition of Life School 101. I'm excited about today's show and our guest, um, which I just had the opportunity to meet him just now because he's a friend of uh, Mary Adams. Um, so I went on his Facebook and he has a lot of Facebook Live um, where he does his mediumship. Very exciting. Um, uh, love, love to watch his stuff. And he's also a poet. I've read some of his poems because you know I like to do that. So anyway, I'm going to let Mary talk a little bit about Brian. Um, and some of the things that he does so we can get the conversation going. Welcome, Brian. Mary? Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Hi, everybody. (laughs) Hi, Brian. And hi, Hi, everybody. Welcome to Life School 101 TV. And it is so exciting to be here with you today. And I got the opportunity to meet Brian a couple of months ago through a client and dear friend of mine of many, many years who recommended him to me. Mm -hmm. And the moment I met him, I knew that I was speaking with someone very special. And I want to give Brian the opportunity to tell you about himself. He's the one who can do that best. Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful to be here. Um, so I, I could talk a little bit about my myself. Um, I would have been a terrible drag queen, and that's really why I became a medium. I'm just, <laughs> just, but I think that I just think that maybe the best reason to become a medium because I would be the worst drag queen in the world. Um, RuPaul's Drag Race would never even call me. They would be no. like, I have nothing to do with this poor fellow. But, um, no, but my work as a medium is kind of interesting to me because I was very reluctant in a way about this path, and. Um, for me, it opened up when I was working as a, a Greek counselor in a hospice, um, and um, I was working as a family therapist, and I started to have these experiences, and I won't bore you guys with all the details of that, unless you guys want to go into the, the richness of that story. But um, but it has been nothing but miraculous to me, because um, as a gay man, I went through the AIDS crisis and had so many dear friends of mine that died, and I will never forget the unfolding of the AIDS world. Um, in Washington, D.C. It was the entire eighth quilt, and um, it was a mind-blowing experience. I remember being on the edge of those quilts and watching every single one of those quilt panels and thinking, that is a person represented by that fabric, and the loved ones were on the outside of that fabric. And mediumship has taught me that we are all in that fabric, um, that nobody is separate from that fabric. So those beautiful colors are, are a representation of all of us. And um, it's a representation of our souls and our connection to one another. And it's profoundly changed how I think about all my brothers um, and my loved ones that died from AIDS and other things. Um, So it's been um, nothing but a miracle for me. I I appreciate that too, you know, I mean, because it is, it's uh, it's rare. Uh, I mean, well, maybe not too rare, but rare. And there's people like Mary and I that really, really need messages and want messages. and it's 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 great that we have you here and we're going to be talking about this um and i love your your willing to talk about um the aids crisis and what's happened there and uh because that's a part of all of us and if we don't talk about it then you know it's going to just affect all our minds you know what i mean so I'm really encouraged that you're here you're a funny guy i noticed that i mean ron paul did call I heard, I heard him. Yeah, he called. He must have called Chico, mm-hmm. though, because I didn't get the call, but Chico might have. Maybe you called Mary. <laughs> Did he call you Mary? <laughs> yeah, I want to be a drag queen. I think I'd be a good one. I would, Don't too. You? I would, great. too. Yeah, why not? <laughs> would that be fun? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, but the courage that takes is also amazing, too. But then, and so. Yes, Absolutely. So, Brian, I want to start out the interview asking this question. What do you feel and what do you see when you are doing mediumship? You know, it's interesting. Um, every soul is different. And um, so depending on the personality of the spirit that wants to talk to me, um, it's, it act, it, they, they connect in different ways. Some spirits will show me exactly what they look like immediately and they want to start there. 
and um, and then sometimes they'll just be talking in my ear sometimes. So it's just, it's interesting to me. It's if they were shy in life, they're shy also in spirit. And so that's kind of interesting. I have to encourage them to come closer and tell them that I yes, I do have time for you. You're not a burden, and it's really sweet. So there's um. So what I find in when I'm actually in the actual when I when I get past the initial introduction, I think about my hand reaching out and I kind of wait for the hand of a spirit to hold my hand. Mm -hmm. And then as I start to connect with them, they really are using my faculties to communicate with their loved ones. But they're using my my clairvoyance. They're using what we call clairsentience, which is our empathy, um, which we all have. But some people are very clairvoyant. Mm -hmm. um, like the two of you are very are very the two of you are very clairsentient. You feel the feelings of everybody around you. Um, you've had that, I mean, both of you have had that whole life. So, and then um, there's clairaudience, which is where you're hearing the spirit. Um, for me, it typically starts clairvoyant, then it goes to clairsentience, then it goes to clairaudience for me. Um, but I have some cool friends that smell stuff and and they taste food and that's, that's not me. Um, I, don't, I don't have those cool faculty much. Um, so spirits typically rely more on my visual when they connect with me, but um, but their personality is a huge part. It has a huge effect, um, huge influence over that. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to ask you a question about Mary. Is Mary truly my soul sister? <laughs> Do you know? Well, so <laughs> well, w without a doubt. I mean, the people that we are naturally connected to in this life, I feel are soulmates. We have this attachment to the word soulmate being yeah. a love relationship, you know, with mother yeah. or what have you. But it's actually, it's uncanny, isn't it? How we will have this relationship that's already there for us when we meet somebody and it's, you don't have to even develop it because it's just there. Mm -hmm. And that to me is an indication of a soulmate and somebody that you made an agreement to do this life with and you would agree to connect with one another at a certain point. Um, so for me, that's kind of how I hold the word soulmate. Um, and, um, you know, those relationships are, are such treasures because there's so many other relationships that are big lessons. Like mm -hmm. oftentimes our parents or our siblings can be a big lesson for us. They, you know, the people that may be challenging to love, um, but are just as deserving of love, of course. Um, but I, I believe our, like our family members to me offer our greatest lessons of love. Because if you can learn to love somebody that can't love you back, I feel like you're learning tremendous things as a soul. But then you have these soulmates that um, catalyze you and anchor you and reconnect you to your purpose. And, um, and those, I mean, they are they are miracles to me, have to be frank with you. Yeah. So I'm glad that you guys have that in one another because it's, it's interesting when you're doing a project with somebody where you have that soul connection. You know, you and Mary both earned your smile. You know, so... Um, there's a there's an integrity in that that I really really honor because when you go to dark places in life and you have really hard experiences and you don't um, feel like you can continue on or you have a sense of hopelessness and then you find this way of choosing to live again and yes. choosing to believe again and choosing to have hope again yeah. and choosing to believe that you're more than your suffering we we wrap all that up in lovely spiritual language but I mean if we're being honest that's really hard. And it's, we can have all these beautiful groups we throw around that. But when you're, I always tell people, if you know the wallpaper and how it's like, come sit with me. Yeah. Because I get you. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's also your soul connection for the two of you is that you know what the wallpaper and how it looks like. And so when you find somebody that can see that in you and love you mm -hmm. and honor your struggle and honor your way in which you found your smile again and found the light again, that to me is um, some of the close. Uh, some of the most important relationships we'll have in this life. You know, witnessing one another, it's so funny in our friendships, we think it's often our words yep. and all this wonderful wisdom we have to share with our friends about what they should be doing with their lives because I often think I know what my friends should be doing. I'm 99% wrong, by the way. But um, but when I give people my presence and I let them know I'm there and I listen and, I'm, and I hear them, um, it's amazing what we offer people. We're giving people space for them to know that their story matters. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, that's, I think, what mediumship is about, um, or any psychic work, actually. I think it's a form of witnessing. Yeah. And um, I think when we go beyond it, it actually cause harm. If we start to assume we know everything about a person and tell them everything they should be doing, I actually think we can cause a lot of harm. I wanted to say that, Brian, I think this is what, when we first met via the phone, mm -hmm. I felt your essence in such a deep way. I understood 
from a soul level what, where you were coming from and what you've done and, and you understood me from that same place of vulnerability and truth. And I really appreciate that. And what I want to bring into the topic next is I want to talk about the work that you're doing out in the world for people because it is so touching. It brings tears to my eyes. You are such an amazing person for the service that you give. Thank you. Please tell everybody about it. So I do, well, so I, I do my mediumship readings and I, I do them in a way um, where whatever somebody's able to, to pay is what I receive. And I don't do payment plans because I don't want people to owe me anything. I want that, uh, want that to be clean with people, um, if that makes sense. Um, because um, to me, mediumship should be available to anybody who needs to receive it or wants to receive it. I do want to also acknowledge that with mediumship, I don't believe we need mediums to connect with our loved ones. I think mediums, a good medium, it's our job to prove to you that they're there. And then your job is to develop that connection with them in spirit. Um, you don't need a medium to do that. You really don't. Um, um, a medium should just give you the opportunity to know that you can. And um, that's why I'm, I'm pretty passionate about that piece, because I want to make sure people um, don't get the attachment to that with me, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, because then they become attached to they start to think that um, they need to call me when they want to talk to their mom or what have you. And, and that's just simply not true. Um, they can talk to the mom. That's kind of the whole point of mediumship for me. Um, the other thing I'll share about that is that um, I do a lot of writing and the way in which I write is I try to write from the perspective of um, being vulnerable and not being um, the spiritual, um, you know, the spiritual master, because <laughs> I'm not. You know? So I'm, I'm very clear that um, in my calling as a medium, I don't want to pretend to be something I'm not. And I don't ever want to take somebody's authority away. Um, I think it's the cruelest thing we do to people spiritually is when we take away their own connection to spirit. And we tell them, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, you have to go through me. And um, I simply don't believe that. I think uh, the love of spirit is available to each and every one of us. Nobody's, nobody's above or below in that world. You know, in the human world, we're really attached to comparing and, you know, you're better at this or you're beneath me or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, but in the world of spirit, we're just we're really it's a beautiful space of equanimity um, where our every soul is precious. Every soul is precious. And um, so that means the work that we do honors that. I mean, have you written anything, a book or anything about that? Well, it's one of, in uh, the book I'm, I'm working to get published, uh, that's, I have a chapter on suicide and, and, um, and I write specifically about my own experiences with my walk with suicide. And, you know, it's interesting. I, I talk in there about um, how suicide shook my hand, but didn't embrace me. Right. And I don't know why, but I know it changed me. So I, I always feel like my life is on borrowed time in a way. Um, I feel like my life is not just my own um, because of so many courageous, beautiful people who didn't, um, who were suicide embraced them, they died from suicide. And that's not my story. Um, I was seven years old when I first tried to complete suicide with flint vitamins and aspirin. And, you know, when you think about what a seven-year-old's journey is like at that point, if they're thinking of something like that. Yeah. Um, but it's also interesting, a lot of the uh, research now coming out about mediumship that's done by reputable universities, kind of fascinating, actually, but they're revealing that there's trauma in childhood. And so if you have a calling to the, to the work of you know, being a light worker, whether it be a healer, medium, intuitive, whatever that calling is, tarot cards, um, um, there's a there's kind of this interesting uh, pattern now that's emerging that the trauma of our childhood became kind of the, the thing that cracked open our soul to be able to then have these abilities in our adult life and um, so and the danger I think of, of any ability is that you know mediumship is an ability and I don't see it as a gift and I'll explain why of that because I can use this ability to completely serve myself and have everybody think I'm wonderful or I can use this ability to help other people to know that they are beautiful and help them other people to know that they also can connect to them, right? um, and that they can they can find a connection. Um, and so that's why I see it as an ability because it's um, it's a lesson for my soul. When you have an ability like this, you um, there's a way in which people will put you above above themselves, which is completely inappropriate. Yep. I always say to my clients that my um, it's if if this reading only gets you to think um, only gets you to uh, believe, uh, believe the very best of me, then I failed you. Because a good reading should make you believe the best of me. Brian, what, 
when your work, you work with so many people and I'm so impressed with the Facebook lives. I've really enjoyed when you've been on Facebook live and seeing the comments and seeing people that are saying, that's me, yeah. you're with my loved one at the moment. Tell me about that for you. My, I had a really amazing teacher, Lisa Williams, in her certification class that I took from her. Um, she talked about surrendering to spirit, and it changed my life because um, she talked about not needing the yes. She said, when you no longer need the yes, you'll become a great medium. And I'll never forget it because um, so when I do readings now, I feel like there's a sitter. The person who called me to get the reading is really the sitter in a sense. And but my job is actually to connect with the person of spirit. And so what that means is that I surrender myself. And what that that sounds so dramatic. I'm not talking about S and M, by the way, although I make that joke in my writing. It's it's not that it's not like that, but it's more um, it's more that I'm not doing this to earn the approval of the sitter and have the sitter say, yes, 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 you're right. When I gave up my attachment to that, that's when I could just surrender to the loved one and just let their words come through, let their messages come through, because I was no longer needing the sitter to say, yes, you're good, yes, you're good, yes, you're good. And that took a long time, and I, and it's, I still struggle, actually. Um, it's, but if I remember to surrender to the spirit, that changes everything. And I think that's true in any kind of psychic work, um, because if you need the approval of the sitter, there's a way in which you'll get in the way of the information, and you'll change mm -hmm. it even. Mm -hmm. um, to try to fit what you think they want you to say, and then you're no longer in integrity. And now you're trying to, um, now you're out of that integrity, I think, ultimately, which we've all been out of integrity in that work because um, we all want to be approved of. I want the approval of the world, and then that's, that's just real. But, um, but I think it was one thing I was going to mention to you guys. I was working with a young man when I was, when I was a special education teacher, and he, um, I was assigned one hour a day to work in a severe and profound room with this young man. And he was in a wheelchair, he had his arm like this, and he rested his arm on a plastic desk, and he could ambulate this one hand. And long story short, the, um, my boss sent me in there for one hour a day, and I kept telling her, I have my master's degree, I'm supposed to work in the science and mathematics room. And she was like, thank you, but you're going to be in that room for one hour a day. <laughs> so they assigned me to one kiddo, and, and every time I was like, I don't know what to do with them, I'm confused. I don't have a master's degree in how to work with this kid, and I would kept telling my boss why I couldn't work with this kid. Well, every time I'd go in to work with this kid at the end of our time, he would go and he would grab this finger. And um, I'd, go to sh I'd go to hug him and to take his hand, I'd shake that hand, he'd grab this finger. And the reason why that's significant was I never had any idea what he was saying. After about two and a half weeks of being with this young man, I started to soften to him, he was soften to me, and he would always, sh his face would tighten up at the end of our time and he'd start to cry when I'd leave. But I felt, like I wasn't, I just didn't feel that connection. I felt like I was wasting my time. Long story short, two and a half weeks in, my boss finally said, okay, you're being such a pain. I'm gonna send in the speech language therapist to work with you. Speech language therapist came in, you know, this is yes, this is no, this all these other kind of hand singles. And at the end, she grabbed his finger and he grabbed her finger. And I said, well, what does that mean? And he said, well, he's saying, I love you. Oh, so this whole time for two and a half weeks, this kid is this kid of this beautiful spirit is telling me that he loves me. And um, I was completely focused on myself and on how I wasn't meant to be there. I didn't know how to work with this kid. And every day he was telling me that he loved me. And that to me is, I think, the foundation for the mediumship. Um, it's it's really moving me and enough of me aside so that the loved one can communicate. It's moving enough of my ego and my fear aside so that the uh, loved one can say what they need to say. Does that make sense? Yeah. I know. He didn't die. He did not die of like a heart event, but he died like in, a, in a, almost like an accident, like a car accident kind of thing. And he's got a kind of a gruff voice and he would laugh a lot. He's got a very big voice and he would wear um, a build hat. He'd wear a hat that would have a bill on it. Is this call to you guys? Is anybody that you guys would know? <laughs> You know so much? Possibly, yeah. yeah. What yes. about you? What about you, Linda? Um, I was trying to think, but no, because uh, both my, my father and my father and my stepfather died of heart attacks. Okay, that's not it's not that. Um, it's he would have died more tragically. He would have died more in like a car accident kind of situation. And if this doesn't call, then I'm going to release him and, and bring in another loved one. Is this call to you, Mary? Because I don't want to force it. 
I have an uncle and I have a step grandfather that it could be. And he's kind of an overweight fellow. Does this make sense? And he's um, he's he would have worn um, like white T-shirts and there would have been um, I think he would have drank beer and his beer would have been inside of a thing. He would have put his beer inside of, a, of like a anyway, he's he's he would have put his beer inside of a sleeve kind of thing to keep it cool. He's just funny. And he wears kind of a hat. and He's got a lot of hair. He's like a big kind of kind of like a big man. He's like a very, got a big stocky energy to him. Does this make sense? Absolutely. OK. <laughs> and he's. So oh, he's so he's got this big hearty laugh. This makes sense, and he's also very. Um, um, he smiles a lot, and he would have had big smile lines because he, and but his whole body moves when he laughs. Like when he would laugh, his whole body would. Move. Does this make sense, Mark? Okay, he's just coming through, and that's all he wants to acknowledge. He just he's just grateful that you acknowledged him. But I'm going to complete because I have another lovely one. I want to see if I can connect with this one. If that's okay, he's just acknowledging that he's here with you. Um, let me see who else. Um, And now I have a mother with me. She would have curly hair and it's brown. That's my mother. Right? Sounds like my mother. And, um, shorter. It's actually not yeah. long, but shorter. Does this make sense? Yeah. She would be quite serious and she would have had actually, um, she would have been kind of shut down in her heart throughout her life. Does this make sense? Uh, yes. You, okay. She would have, I feel like she would have been a smoker. Does this make sense? A what? A smotherer? Yeah, a smoker? Oh, a smoker, yes. A smoker. <laughs> yes. Okay. And she's also a, um, you can see kind of, um, I, she must have had an illness at the end that would have made her gaunt because her face is, she just seems kind of like she had a heavy heart. Yes. Um, and she would have been, uh, life would have been very hard for this person. Yes. Uh, life would have been very hard for this mother. Does yep. this make sense, Lo? Yeah. And she would have been somebody that was, um, um, you know, she's very, she's very fair, but she's not very maternal. She's very serious. Um, she would have shut down on moments. I almost feel like she would have had to shut down in life because things were so hard for her. Does this make sense? Y yes. And I almost feel like she would have been in a room a lot. She would have been hiding from the world. Uh, curtains would be closed. Does this yes. make sense, love? Yes. And she'd be in her bed a lot. She'd be was really depressed. And this is at a time when when women were going through mental health issues. They were just perceived. Uh, they were minimized, honestly. Yep. And they were told. Um, uh, you're just not uh, working hard enough. There was a lot of shame that would greet women when they were going through this at this next month. Yes. And you would give them medicine, like drugs, things mm -hmm. would just say, you know, you just need to get over it. But she authentically had some pretty um, heavy duty, uh, um, heavy duty uh, um, emotional kind of issues. Wait to see what else happened. Here. I feel like she would have, did she, um, I'm getting a mixed message, but I feel like she would have passed from cancer, actually. Yes, uh, she did. Did she have dementia? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, um, But she also had cancer. Make sense? Yep. Okay. Um, so she would have been somebody that would have been um, really struggling even later in life with health issues. She would have had a lot going on. But there's a dementia aspect to that, too. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like I can't catch her eyes near the end of her life. Does this make sense, Peter? I saw her eyes when, she, yes. They were open. Okay. She just wants to acknowledge you. Um, you never gave up on your mom and you were very loyal to her and it was not um, always easy. And uh, there's a lot of powerlessness around mom because you couldn't make things better for her. Um, you had to oftentimes witness her but you couldn't make her better. And she wants you to know um, how proud she is of you because um, you have, uh, you found a joy that your mom didn't find. And she on the other side gets to celebrate in that joy. She says that you, um, the way you see people, the love you offer them and the forgiveness you offer her and the family um, is so moving for her. And that you've, um, he is learning so much from you in the world spirit. Does this make sense, love? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. And she's also feels like you are a mother to many people. Um, she feels like um, she celebrates you on Mother's Day because of the way in which you mother people. Oh. Make sense? Yes. <laughs> yes and then you have many people that, re that rely on you and that you've helped to get through some pretty difficult uh, situations. Yes. Um, she says you don't take yourself seriously enough, though. She wants you to start to take yourself more seriously um, as a healer and as somebody that um, is in this world for a purpose. Does this make sense? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, she also says um, we, we're both unlucky in love. 
I don't know if that means anything. <laughs> she's just making a joke about that. I don't know yeah, if there was yeah. a time where you guys related to each other with that, but she just yes. thinks it's funny. And she's yeah. kind of making jokes about men too, to be honest, yeah. but that's yeah. okay. Yeah. But, um, but um, she also just wants to say, um, so I feel like you must've been with your mom when she died. Were you, were you yes. with your mom during that process? Yes. And you were caring for her? Does this make sense? Um, yes. Okay. And you're more advocating for her care. Does this make sense? You're So is she in a nursing home or in a hospice? She was in a nursing home. Yes. Got it. Okay. But there's an advocacy happening around. Does this make sense? You were making sure that everything was okay? Yeah. Or do we need to be complete? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll complete this. We'll complete this, Linda. But um, anyway, that's her That's her, her offering that she's offering us. And I um, just want to thank her for coming through. She's and also thank that lovely kind of of um, Santa Claus kind of man coming through. It's really fun too. <laughs> Santa Claus. Anyway, thanks again. I can come on again and just do readings too if you guys want I think that would be great, yeah. Of- and you mentioned Santa Claus. Thanks My so father much. played Santa Claus all the time. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm there you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I just want to thank you so much, Brian. What, what wonderful. And you'll come back, right? For sure. I would be honored. I'd yeah. be honored to come back. Yeah, and wouldn't he be a great I fit for, for our um, group Empowering Your Life today too? And it, and I know uh, it. I, I just don't want to stop stop the show because it's so wonderful. Everything you said is is true, and it, it just radiates in my heart really good. So I want to thank you for that. And you know, this time I'm going to say goodbye first, Mary, and you can say it afterwards if you want to. But what I want to say to the audience, besides saying goodbye, is. Believe in yourself, you know, believe in yourself because there, I mean, I think what uh, Brian is trying to say is those in the spirit world see you and what you're, what you're achieving in your life and they're there to, to help you through. Um, And mediums like Brian are very open and able to uh, really express that to you and not be there to judge you at all, um, but to bring you a little bit of light from the other side or, or whatever it is that you need to connect. The last thing I want to say to you, Brian, is thank you very much. And I want your book when you do write it. Thank you very much. And Mary will, will and Linda, thank you, Brian. Uh, one last thing from your mom. She yeah. says, don't be so hard on yourself, love. And I know you oh. got to go. Sorry. Go ahead, Mary. Sorry, love. Thank no, you. No, that's important. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> that's the truth. And thank you, Brian, for being here. I appreciate you sharing your gift and giving us the gift of connecting with our loved ones on the other side. And thank you, everybody, for joining us on Life School 101 TV. This show is about you, about topics that are important that we need to be talking about. And today's show was very special to me. Brian, we've got about 30 seconds left, so I want to give you an opportunity to tell everybody how they can reach you. Oh, thank you again for having me on, you guys. This was a real honor for me. And um, people can reach me at www.halfwaythroughthewoods.com. And you can schedule readings there if you like. And um, it also has my phone number there if you want to reach out or uh, wanting to just check in before you schedule a reading. My little girl, well, she means everything to me. She can lift me up and take me down. She can see inside of me And I'm all rolled up inside her little arms tonight There's no other place I'd